Okay. Here's another example of an indeterminate form. We have x tending to 0 from above. Let's see, if x tends to 0 from above, the, the first term, 3 times a very tiny number would be very tiny, plus 1 would get closer and closer to 1. And the bottom, we have tinier and tinier positives. Um, here, let's see, the sine of x and x are about the same thing. So as x tends to, from zero, to 0 from above, we have 1 divided by tinier and tinier positives. So we have infinity minus infinity. Now you might look at that and say, well, should infinity minus infinity be 0? But it doesn't really work that way. What we're really saying is that these numbers are getting large without bound, and these numbers are also getting large, and we're finding the difference between them. Um, you could think this might be like um, my lifetime earnings versus Bill Gates' lifetime earnings. Our, both of our earnings, as time goes on, we earn more and more and more, and if we could live forever, they would be unbounded. Um, but if you were to take Bill Gates' lifetime, earn, lifetime earnings and subtract my lifetime earnings, he's going to be his his earnings are going to be running away um, to infinity much faster than mine can drag his down, and so the limit would be infinity. Or if we reversed positions, right? It's possible to have something increasing without bound minus something else that's increasing faster, and it could be pulled to negative infinity. Or there could be some balance in between; they could come into some balance. So this is an indeterminate form. But again, it's not the kind that L'Hopital's applies to. So infinity minus infinity isn't the kind you can use L'Hopital's on because it has to be 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. But what we should do if we encounter this one is to try to rearrange. In this case, I have the difference in two fractions. And so a good idea would be to get a common denominator. So I'm just going to try to rearrange here. I can get a common denominator by multiplying the second fraction top and bottom by x and the first fraction top and bottom by sine x. So what we have here is this fraction uh, 3x plus 1 times sine x minus x all over x sine x. Now, as x tends to 0, it's a single fraction. The sine x is going to 0, so that's going to wipe out this first term. And x is 10 to 0, so we have 0 minus 0 on top. That's 0. And uh, really tiny times really tiny will get closer and closer to 0 down below as well. So we have the kind of indeterminate form that L'Hopital's applies to. Now that we have it this way, we can go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. It's going to take a little bit of work to take this derivative. Let's see, the derivative of the first, we have a product here. So take the derivative of the top, I need to take the derivative of the first, which is 3, times the second, which is sine x, plus the first, which is 3x plus 1 times the derivative of the second, which is cosine x. And then the derivative of uh, x is negative 1. So the derivative of this negative x is negative 1. Down below, we need the product rule. The derivative of the first is 1 times the second gives sine x. Plus the first times the derivative of the second would give me x cosine x down there. Now, let's see what happens as x tends to 0. Ooh, looks like it's still 0 over 0, because 3 times sine x, as x gets smaller and smaller, sine will go to 0. So this is going to be 0 plus, let's see, as x tends to 0, 3x plus 1 gets closer and closer to 1. And the cosine of 0 is 1, so we have plus 1. And then we also have this minus 1. Uh, downstairs, we have the sine of a very tiny number will be very tiny. And a tiny number times cosine will be very tiny. So again, the limit is 0 over 0. So it's OK to apply L'Hopital's. We get the limit as x tends to 0 from above of, let's see, the derivative of this top, the derivative of 3 sine would be 3 cosine. And the derivative of 3x times cosine x would be the derivative of the first, which is 3, times the second, which is cosine x, plus the first, which is 3x plus 1, times the derivative of the second, which is minus sine x. And the derivative of this negative 1 is 0. Downstairs, the derivative of sine is cosine. And the derivative of x cosine x would be the derivative of the first times the second. So that will be 1 times cosine x um, plus the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we get negative x sine x. Finally, we can evaluate the limit. As x tends to 0, cosine is going to go to 1. And this sine is going to go to 0. So we have 3 plus 3, that's 6 upstairs, 
Downstairs we have 1 plus 1 minus 0, so we get 6 over 2 is 3. Here's another example of an infinity minus infinity one. As x tends to 0 <coughs> from above, ln x goes to negative infinity. Um, we're taking the natural log of the sine of x, so as x tends to 0 from above, the sine of x will tend to 0, and we'll have the natural log of numbers that are closer and closer to 0, so this is going to be minus minus infinity. So we have negative infinity plus infinity. Let's see if we can try to combine these. In this case, we can use um, a property of natural logs. We know that the natural log of the difference is the quotient of the natural log. So this is the, or sorry, the quotient of, the natural log of the quotient is the difference of the natural log. So if we go backwards, we have the natural log of x over sine x. We can combine them into a single log. Okay, at this point we need to use um, a result about continuous functions. Natural log is a nice continuous function. And so what we can do is um, we can use this result. If the outside function is continuous and the inside function is approaching some value, then the limit can pass inside of that um, continuous function. So we have the limit as x tends to c of a continuous function of g of x, and this is approaching some value. Then we can pass the limit inside, and then the answer will be the, that we get f of b. So in this case, our outside function f is the natural log. It's continuous, so we can pass the limit inside. We get the limit as x tends to 0 from above of x over sine x. And now this limit we recognize as being 1, because it's like sine x over x, only it's a reciprocal, and the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Or we can apply L'Hopital's now that we've passed the limit inside. We take the derivative, we have the limit as x tends to 0 from above of the derivative of the top is 1, and the derivative of the sine is the cosine. So we have the natural log of. Let's see, one, as uh, x tends to 0, the cosine of a small angle is very close to 1. So this gets closer and closer to 1, so we have the natural log of 1 over 1. And the exponent you put on e to get 1 is 0, so this limit happens to be 0. Okay, this is a, a very useful principle, particularly for um, some forms that we'll encounter that have trouble with exponents. So here's an example. If we look at this function, we have the limit as x tends to 1 from above of x to the 1 over x minus 1. So the base is getting closer and closer to 1, although it's always more than 1. And the exponent, as x tends to 1 from above, x is always 1 plus a bit. 1 plus a bit minus 1 will be a tiny positive. 1 divided by uh, positive numbers has to be positive. If those numbers get tinier and tinier, that's going to go to positive infinity. Now you might say, wait, isn't 1 to any power 1, so shouldn't the limit be 1? But that's not exactly right, because this number is never actually 1, right? That's the limit. x is getting closer and closer to 1. So what we're really talking about is numbers that are slightly more than 1 um, being raised to higher and higher powers. It's possible when you have something like this that if the numbers aren't going to 1 fast enough and the powers are increasing quickly, then this could actually, you'd have a number that is um, close to 1, albeit a little bit bigger than 1, raised to a pretty high power could actually grow pretty big. So on the other hand, if these numbers get to 1 pretty fast, then if these are essentially 1 very, very rapidly, it doesn't matter what the exponent is, um, we're going to get 1. Or we could get somewhere in between. So this is an indeterminate form. We can't tell what's going to happen right off the bat. But it's not the kind that L'Hopital's applies to. So we've got this indeterminate form, but it's not 0 over 0, and it's not infinity over infinity. Here's how we can handle that. Um, all right, my trouble is in the exponent. Right? So if I could somehow bring that exponent down, that would be good. And one way that you can bring an exponent down is if there's a natural log. But I can't just take the natural log of something. I would change the value unless I undo it right away. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of this, but I'm also going to put that inside the, the exponential function. So this is just my notation for the function that uh, it's named as exp. Whatever you give it, it puts that as the exponent on e. So we're really talking about e to the natural log. Since these two functions are inverses, they undo each other, and so I have exactly the same thing as I had before. 
Here's where we can use that idea about passing a limit inside. So exponential, the exponential function is a nice continuous function. So it's continuous on the whole line. Let's just pass that limit in like this. Now I can focus on taking that limit, although once I find that limit, it's still inside this exponential function. Remember, my whole purpose in taking that natural log was to allow that uh, exponent to come down. That's using the power rule for natural logs, or for logs in general. So we get 1 over x minus 1 times the natural log of x. So that's the power rule for logs. And you can see this is like natural log of x over 1. So I have e to the limit as x tends to 1 from above of the natural log of x all over x minus 1. Now this limit inside here, as x tends to 1 from above, um, natural log is going to 0, and 1 minus 1 is approaching 0 as well. So now we have a form where L'Hopital's applies. So let's apply L'Hopital's rule, which says this is the limit as x tends to 1 from above of the derivative of natural log of any function is the derivative of the inside over the inside. And the derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. So we're talking about um, e to, let's see, this limit would be 1 over 1, which would be 1 over 1, which is 1, so e to the 1. So the answer in this case is e. The limit is e. So we had an indeterminate form that involved trouble with the exponent. And then we just said, well, if we could take the natural log of this, the exponent could come down. So we took the natural log, but you can't just take the natural log unless you undo it. So we also put this inside the natural exponential function. Then we use the fact that the natural exponential function is continuous to pass the limit inside and focus on the limit of this thing that involves the natural log. Since it was a log, we could bring the power down. We rewrote it in a form that had 0 over 0 so that L'Hopital's would apply. We applied L'Hopital's to the limit on the inside. And then remember, whatever that limit is, it's still inside the exponential function. So we got 1 as the limit inside. e to the 1 would be e.